that's all it is. It's 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 it, that that is the thing with the stuff. I, I press don't sell yourself short. I know it's wizardry. I know it's sorcery. <laughs> don't sell yourself short, Chuck. You're a tremendous. <laughs> <flash>. <laughs> How are you this morning? Good. Yeah, doing nice. good. Nice, nice. So, uh, is it any any of us uh, joining after this, or is it just it's just going to be you uh, YouTube? Right on, right on. Just okay. us. Yep. Um, all right. Well, basically, how it's going to go is uh, I usually have five questions to ask over the course of the show, um, but if the conversation off mic kind of answers those uh we'll just see what happens <laughs> okay so the main the main thing uh that's important is like during i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this down just a little bit just because uh the algorithm has been really good at kicking us off um mm. we always appeal it and it and, and it gets removed but like it it's just obnoxious when it like kills the momentum and then like the people get kicked off the stream. So I'm yeah. just going to keep the music low, even though we're allowed to play it. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, I want to get the who, the what, and the where, the why about the event and about the seven inch and all that. Uh, but if you have anything specific outside of those two things that you want to mention, just let me know. And we can kind of like naturally work that in as we go. Cool. Um, yeah. All right, so yeah, after this, uh, Uncle Tupelo was, I don't know, that was like kind of how I thought I could bridge the gap from women folk into where we are now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, for sure. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we'll just be going, going through the list. Hope we have time for it all, because um, I, I realized this one's a little bit long. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a little bit over time, but that, that's that's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh, just gonna set up all these other links real quick. Here. Uh, there we go. Oh no! Yeah, we lost yeah. the Dan. I'm here. I'm. <laughs> I'm here. Maybe. Uh... Is Dan at work? No. Oh, are well, you? I kind of. <laughs> I'm I'm on an appoint I'm on an appointment right now. Okay, <laughs> that's right. not a lie. It's not. No, it's not. I <laughs> yeah. made sure I made sure that my boss was cool. Okay, you know I this is this is not the first time we we've had people on the show uh, do this at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's 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 uh, totally fine. Yeah. Um. So that. Uh, Excusing the obvious pun of your band name, this is specious. This, this is daylight hours jobs right here. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, it is. It's it actually is kind of is funny because uh, Matt still works a night job, uh, and then our bass player Christian. Uh, works like super early in the morning, so it's almost like he kind of has a night job. <laughs> you know, it's almost he's like almost on fourth shift instead of yeah. You know. yeah okay. So, so like you guys, you guys are like Captain Planet. Like each one of you has like you know Captain like first shift, second shift, third shift. Yeah, yeah. And then we just <laughs> like yeah, we all come together. Yep. How do you practice then if you all have like that disparate schedules? My well, days off. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Spinatron's giving me lip about the metadata. Okay, that's good. So, with this, uh, this set's gonna come to a close uh, after um, not this track, but the next track. Uh, so we'll just kind of go through uh the basic intro of just you know you're here we're talking with you um and then uh we'll probably be trying to drop uh little promos throughout the show for the thing i i want to try to make it slightly different each time <laughs> yeah. but you know with radio like it's like a new audience every 
15 minutes, so there will be some retreads. Um, so if there's anything like particularly like, oh, we should mention this on air uh, that comes up in this conversation, uh, just forgive me if I start asking the same questions. Uh, just because, yeah, not everyone watches both of these things. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's okay. I get it. Uh, I, I, I think in today's era, you know, like, it, I don't, yeah, I feel like people almost, there is like a whole subset of people who just watch the videos and don't ever... <laughs> <laughs> don't ever listen to the radio so like yeah. I, I get that's a thing that's a yeah. thing as well um but uh there are people who have no idea that i do this <laughs> 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 have no idea that the zoom chat is like a thing um mm -hmm. so yeah we'll try to cover all of our bases there um so i guess my one question and i i can save this for on air because it's more of like a, a boring logistical thing um but it is is it it this is a is not a split right it's just a double release show yeah is it a split yeah okay. it's a double release show yeah okay perfect i wanted to clarify that just because my diy adult brain see the word <laughs> seven inch and we're like oh cool yeah you're putting out a split okay, you're no, right. no, 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 no 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 you're not doing that um so it is a double release show with the get together mm -hmm. okay perfect perfect all right i because i think they were probably in sort of the same uh sort of the same position that we were where mm -hmm. you send the stuff off to the the pressing plant and you have right. no idea when you're going to get it back. And so right, book right, shows right, right. and it just, you know, just so happens to land on, you know, Oh, well this show is going to be close to when we get those records back. So let's just make that <laughs> early show. <laughs> is that how you did it? Like, did you yeah. just go? Like, yeah. Cause like yeah. the plant, what did the plant quote you? Like, ah, it could be six months, could be three years. Yeah. I really? placed, oh. I placed the order in like, Man, I want to say January, and they said, "Well, if you, we're hoping to get it to you by August, September." And I went, "Oh, okay." And so uh, I checked in with them again, probably in April or May, and I was just like, "Well, where, where, where are we at?" And they're like, "Well, we're still, we're still kind of on the timeline." And then, yeah, just out of nowhere, they said. Oh hey, your records are done. Uh, we'll ship them out next week. So at least, just, at least yeah. they're done. Yeah, yeah, uh. at least they're done. So <laughs> we got them, and, and somewhere in there, Linus, uh, the folks from Linus asked us to play a show, and I was like, yeah, sure, because we, I mean, it's on the Palmer's patio, so I've wanted yeah. to play that for, you know, forever, and so. Uh, and yeah, and and so the the pressing plant said, "Hey, your records are done. We'll send them to you next week." And so I just said to Linus, "I think this is going to be our seven inch release show. <laughs> yeah. We're we're hijacking your show." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, uh, three weeks later, we get the records, and I'm like, and then I have to message Linus again, and be like, "Yes, this is definitely going to be our release show." So. <laughs> So yeah. was it was it always planned to be the get togethers release, or did it become like an arms race where it's just like they're releasing it? God damn it! All right, we're releasing ours now. <laughs> no, yeah, it was uh, the right here decided, or no, yeah, I just I really got that message from them two days ago. Yeah, that they're also going to put out their seven inch at this, so. Yeah. It just made sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It just made sense. So. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah, the Palmer's patio thing has been like such a game changer. It really has. Like, it, it's just like it, it cuz Palmer's in itself has had this weird um underdog energy. I mean, like it survived prohibition. You know. So it's just like I I love that like Tony and Christy kind of just looked at the pandemic and went like, well, let's have shows outside because Palmer's <laughs> right. Palmer ain't going anywhere, you know? Yeah. Like it's, it's like this, um, 
but because of that, like it's become, I don't know. Like it, it's kind of like, a, I don't know if you've been down to Winona, like, like Ed's no name bar is like, a Andy from uh, sleeping Jesus describes it as the living room of Winona. Okay. I kind of think, like, I kind of think Palmer's is the living room of Minneapolis. I've seen everyone go to Palmer's, you know, like yeah. ev everybody, like it, it's, it's like the, it, it, like it, it, a lot of places say like, oh, all are welcome here, but like very few places do you see like every, like people from all walks of life, people like rockers, punks, hippies, hip hop heads, like it's, it's this place that just everyone just goes to. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it. Like it, it, it actually feels like a hang. It doesn't feel like a, all right, I guess we're going to go see this thing. I, I, I don't even know who's on the bill. My friends is they're good or whatever. Like when people go to Palmer's because it's, they want to go to Palmer's mm -hmm. and the bills are always usually good, you know, mm -hmm. but like, it's, it's just like it, it really is this place where people just hang and you yeah. never know what you're going to get there. That's what yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also, I mean, it's picking up all the slack of Riverside from yeah. Triple Rock closing to Part Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I feel bad about because like we we lost the four hundred too, and yeah. uh, we got the and then and the cedar the cedar is still here, thank God. But I mean, like mm. the cedar is a a tough room, you know. Like a cedar's <laughs> it's it's six hundred people. Not every band on the West Bank can yeah. make six hundred of their friends. Yeah. <laughs> Every time, every time to play a cedar show, and it's a wonderful place. But like, you know, and I, I and, and the the Viking uh, also, you know, oh, and, and then like, yeah. and I feel bad about the Acadia because the Acadia like didn't even close on its own merit. It was like a hit job. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I feel bad. A for mass transit hit there. job. <laughs> well, I, I and I, and I, I will. We we do have to transition. Uh, out of here because Tom Petty's gonna Tom, but I feel bad for like uh all the folks who were working at the Acadia because it's just like it just got going right yeah. and, then, and then you get hit by a like what what are you supposed to do about that yeah, um okay stand, stand by 10 seconds okay Tom Petty, I was trying to figure, and I'm glad Wildflowers was on on the Desert Island picks list. If you're just tuning in, this is Desert Islands. I'm making a mixtape for Night Jobs, and uh, Wildflowers was on the list Night Jobs gave me. And I'm speaking with uh, Matt and Dan from Night Jobs, but I'm glad you put it on the list because I was trying to figure out how to transition from women folk and have one foot in the roots. But but we gotta we we gotta get those guitars in there somewhere. But for some reason, Tom Petty, like you know, like uh, Kevin Bacon for movies. I think Tom Petty is for music. Like <laughs> Tom Petty is like that common connection. Metalheads love Tom Petty. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Tom yeah. Tom Petty. Fair. yeah. I, 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 like there's something about Tom Petty yeah. that just like it's it's that it's that link. So we heard we heard it's good to be king, uh, broken social scene and Uncle Tupelo. Uh, so if you're just tuning in, this is this is Desert Islands, and I'm making a mixtape for Night Jobs, and they have, we were speaking off mic, if you uh, weren't able to join us about just the West Bank scene, because y'all have a show coming up, uh, not this week, but the next week. Where, where is it? When is August? <laughs> <laughs> and everything yeah. after. Yeah, and everything after. It, it, is, it is August 5th, right? Like, that. that, that is that yep. 20 days from now or is that 10 days from now? I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> it's uh yeah, I can't even believe that we're at the end of July already. Uh yeah. For real. But yeah, yeah, August 5th, that's uh a week from Friday at Palmer's. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, and we uh also thanks thanks for having us on, Doc. Of course, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're super excited that we're getting to do this at Palmer's. Uh because Paul, for me, Palmer's was one of the, my first 
sort of uh, <laughs> uh, exposures to the West Bank of Minneapolis uh, right, way back right, when, yeah. and uh, it, it's just such an institution, you know. Yeah. And and like you were kind of saying off mic, it's it, it it's just everybody is invited to Palmer's. They don't, you know, it's it's people from all walks of life, and yeah, yeah. Um, I think it really encapsulates a lot of. Uh, what's great about the West Bank. And it's one of the few places in town where everyone takes you up on that invite. Mm -hmm. Like all the people who are invited show up to that party, which mm -hmm. is cool. That's what makes, that's what makes one, the West Bank fun. But yeah. two, Palmer's, like you won't know if you're speaking to like a Nobel laureate <laughs> in, in, in like patchy, patchy clothing. Like you have no idea who you're, who you're speaking to at Palmer's. Like it, yeah. it, it all walks of life are down there. Mm -hmm. And the shows have been great the past two years, like the, the, the summer the session with the outdoor patio seating. It's like ev everything seems to be like a really good time. I'm, re I'm really glad that Christy and uh, Tony are putting in the work they are down there, especially especially what we were talking off, Mike, about uh, the woes of the West Bank. And like we're, <laughs> we're, we're missing Acadia, Park Wolf, 400 Bar, Triple Rock. Uh, so it's nice that Palmer's is here. Uh, please, please stay and please go, go to Palmer's. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so here on Desert Islands, I make mixtapes for my guests based on the 10 records they would bring to a desert island. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's keep going on with the mixtape before I forget to play more of these underwriting cards. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I have one, I have one that's supposed to be coming up in a few minutes here. Uh, so we're just going to go right along with the mixtape. Here is the dismemberment plan here on KFAI. You still hear me? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, that's a. All right. There we go. Um, yeah, it's crazy about the Acadia, and I I, I, I kind of forgot where I was going with this, and now 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 I now I do, is um. I played a, a, a show at the Acadia because it was one of those things where it was like last year, right like in the middle of the summer when cases were kind of low. And um, my buddy, uh, Jeffrey Fishbein, uh, Fish has been doing only every Monday for like five years. Like he's done a show every Monday and it's moved venues but he used to do it every week at the acadia and uh he somehow got in touch with new management and brought only every monday back oh, okay um, so he contacted me out of the blue like this is just one of those things where it's like hey we're moving it back to the acadia and i was just like oh yeah for old time's sake because i kind of cut my teeth playing the Acadia like way back when. And I, I was so annoying about it too. Like I, I would like, I promised myself I wasn't going to be that person who showed up to the venue with all their old war stories to like this, like the, the like the, the young staff of like you students <laughs> yeah. who could not give any less of a care about what I was talking about. Like these like 20 something people, like, they, have, they have no idea who I am, what I'm talking about. They don't care. All they care is what are you gonna order? And yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. And I'm up there like getting my order and it's just like, hey, can I get a, and they're like, oh yeah, you're playing tonight? And I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And like in my head, it's like, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> You know, I used to play here uh, quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the old. In and, the like, old I, and I can just like, <laughs> I, I, like see the bartender in her eyes. She's like, "Oh yeah, cool." Yeah, that's, like she's, that's she's, good. She's, yeah. I this is my first month here. I'm I I I don't even I don't care. Yeah. Don't care. But, like, to to their credit, what I was really digging about it is like they kind of, you know, like with a, a lot of. Uh, buildings on the west bank it's kind of um it's kind of hard because you are trying to live up to the memories of other people's nostalgia 
-hmm. You know, those buildings have been around for so long. I remember, you know, working door at the new Viking. I remember playing the new Viking. And a lot of the folks who used to go to the Viking, you know, like they were excited until they realized they're like, well, wait a minute, why are they why are they charging us eight dollars for a beer? You know, like we used yeah. to go to the place because it was two dollar taps and the bands were good and like we were you know, so it's like there's like all this stuff and and, and they to their credit, just made the Acadia their own, made, put it into a new direction. They were having like non-alcoholic options for like, one, there's a huge sober community here, but two, all ages shows <laughs> are not as accessible as people think they are. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we, we have venues, but I mean, like, you got to go to Burnsville. Mm. Or, and Acadia was huge. Like, I, I love playing it because of that, because when I was a teenager, they let us play there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, one of the <laughs> one of the first bars, you know, you you got served underage as a musician. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, still yeah. to this day, when I think of the West Bank, I like, I feel a little bit hungover just <laughs> by hearing the mention of it. It's like, oh, do I want to? Oh, no, I haven't even gone there yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's. <laughs> It's it's funny because I have so many memories of playing those playing those bars of like uh and, and, and a lot of you know like the the label I started oh gosh <laughs> fifteen years ago <laughs> which is now defunct, but it was like we were starting it to like kind of just put out all of our friends' bands and all of our friends' bands would like play there so much so that like the staff just got used to us and i remember like uh, <laughs> uh one of the shows we were playing our keyboardist dave aftal it was his 21st birthday that night and but it wasn't it wasn't like we had to wait until midnight like we were playing until midnight and our buddy uh was running sound tim lukid who now is playing in black river review but like he was behind the soundboard and like the entire time he just like holding up a calendar and then like holding up a clock and then just like he just like he had like a twenty dollar bill like just looking at dave he's like the second it's midnight dude you're getting shots i'm buying you shots and he, <laughs> long, like he would just stay in monterey he'd be like 15 minutes dave we got 15 minutes. <laughs> just, like, seven minutes seven and just like holding up an empty shot glass like seven minutes <laughs> incredible <laughs> <laughs> but like we, we didn't really think much of it because back then we were already drinking at the Acadia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been drunk before. <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah. I really remember our first beer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, but yeah, like I, uh, I feel bad for the Acadia because like they, the new ownership really made it their own and like unlike the other venues on the west bank where it's just like bad luck or just you know shooting yourself in the foot like they they didn't even have a chance to do that right <laughs> you know yeah. like it, it, it sucks it was uh, like how long after they how long after the new owners bought it did the bus thing happen it was like it, it felt like I want to say like it three months. Dude, yeah. It's probably longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's not where Logan was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> but like, have you seen the video of it? Yeah. Oh, there's it's video weird. of it? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Well, like it's it's I it, it's it's one of those videos where like I don't know if it was like the panic sets in. But it, it, it's almost it's almost like a bit. <laughs> really? You know? Yeah. Because the like it it first makes impact and you're like, whoa, that's yeah. bad. And to be clear, then, I'm only making jests of it because no one got hurt, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah, and people were working in there that day. Yeah. Like, they, so they were on the other side of the bar and they like this thing comes in. So it first makes impact, and then when you watch it, there's like a point where the bus goes like even further in. Like I don't know oh, if the driver no. panicked and was just like, "Oh, what am I doing?" and hits the gas, and it just yeah. keeps going. Like it was one of those things where it's like, and like, and I don't even know how they handled construction with that because like if you think about it, like 
that there was like a load bearing thing that fell on the bus. Like you can okay. see it. It was like resting on the bus and it's just like, how, how the hell are they going to do this? You know, like, it's just like, I, I hope they're getting some sort of settlement or insurance thing. Cause it's just yeah. like, that, yeah. that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And well, maybe I hope they're getting a settlement just so they can be a thing, you know, right. with like just because like as, as much as Palmer's is great, I think, you know, just as well as I, um, the secret is out and a lot of people are trying to get book gigs booked at Palmer's, you know, oh, yeah. there is. There, there's, there's definitely uh, a line, <laughs> but it's only because like we're, where else are we gonna go? Right. You know, like the, there's like the a lot of venues have been kind of taken from us, um, but there's a there's a line because they do a really good job. Mm. Like the patio is really fun. Let's yeah. be honest. Like, yeah. but I, I would like to see the Acadia come back um something come back I, I heard rumors that someone bought the old honey space and that's oh gonna, really that's gonna be something again which yeah. is cool and i just cool. i kind of got in i i kind of had the discussion with mason like on mm. twitter and yeah you know it was after paul paul part wolf closed and i was kind of lamenting yeah. it where it's like yeah. uh what is you know because the West Bank has such a history with yeah. live music and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And, you know, he had made the point, well, it's, it's nice that these spaces are going back to the community. And I kind of was like, Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But it's kind of like these places are closing and it felt like they used to get replaced. If not like once over like two or three times over. Now it doesn't really feel like that's, happening as much and especially right. on the west bank where it was every block there was right. you know a live music venue now it's you know palmers and red sea and yeah and i i think um no i think mason actually makes a, a really decent point there because like yeah because like i uh as it, not to sound completely hypocritical because we were just talking about like oh we're losing our venues um I did think for a point there uh, that the Twin Cities had too many venues. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. The problem is we lost a few good ones that actually were <clears throat> contributing to the scene. But for a while there, there was this trend of like, hey, live music seems to be popular in this town. Let's just do it. Well, how are we going to do it? Let's just do it. Well, what's our plan? We're just going to do it. And it's just like, it was always a nightmare. Yeah. You know, like there was always, like there was no thought put into, because here's, here's what happens when you try to rush stuff like this. Like it, people don't realize that it's an audio medium. So if you are a place of business, that can be really distracting for people who didn't come to your place of business for the show. Right. You know, so it's just like you either, and they would always just do it. They're like, oh yeah, like it'll get more people in to, to dinner hours. It's like, no, not necessarily. Mm. Because here's the thing. Sometimes people just want to see dinner in a show, you know, like the Aster model mm. where it's like, oh yeah, we're going to go have dinner. And that place has shows. Like some people like get into that experience willingly i think too many bars were just like slapping it together yeah not thinking about how their pa sounds in the room not thinking about oh wait we have to pay sound checks oh wait we have to pay for booking oh wait we actually have to pay for talent oh wait like people aren't coming to the shows yeah mm -hmm. because it's half-assed and it sucks yeah. <laughs> you yeah. guys didn't like you guys weren't like you guys were just like chasing clout of just yeah. like oh yeah the social media kids well this is just like no no you gotta like you you gotta do it with intention mm. or not do it at all otherwise it's just a waste of like the band's time the crowd's time your time the community's time um and 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 so for a while there yeah i i, I would agree there were too many venues here and i think it is a good thing 
that these spaces are actually becoming like nurseries, pharmacies, grocery stores, community centers, because like that is needed, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it was kind of a food desert. Yeah. Um, I still stand by my critique of the too many venues thing, because I think anyone who wants to start a venue now should heed that criticism where it's just like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to start a restaurant or do you want to start a venue? Because the yeah. reason restaurants fail is like, like watch kitchen nightmares. You got like a four page menu and you got, you got too much shit on your menu and you're trying to do everything at once and you're not doing any of it well. Right. That, yeah. We've, we've, we've played a place or two where, uh, I've had the sound guy tell me like, can, can you keep the volume down? Cause the bartenders don't like talking over. And I'm like, dude, you booked a rock and roll band. This is yeah. a rock and roll show. Yeah. Like that, or, that comes down to like the, like, <laughs> like if, if the bartenders know what they're getting into, they don't mind it because they're making money. The people are coming to that show because they want a loud rock show, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but when you like just half ass it and don't research any <laughs> band you're booking and just like get like just and then for years a lot of venues would do that and then they would like anytime they would get criticism, they're just like, Oh yeah, tried looking at it from our point of view. Yeah, like it's just like no, 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 no. <laughs> there, some of the bands in town that you're booking actually are successful successful outside of this town as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's like it's it's not just you know whiny little baby artists going like, why don't you pay me? Because like I played venues where like two hundred people showed up and we still got paid thirty five dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like don't like if if you're don't first of all if you're in debt and you want to make money, don't start a restaurant, you idiot. Uh, and if you're in debt and you want to make money, go <laughs> front a venue, you double idiot. Like, like, <laughs> you, like, you honestly think venues and restaurants make that much yeah. money? No, yeah. they don't. They have to have a plan and they have to oh. have like, an idea and they have to like, you're going to lose money for five years before you make a profit. Like, what do you like? Just. Yeah. You just added hard to hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, like, what were you thinking? Like, just like, like take that money with your buddy in the stock market and make money there. Cause like, this is like, this is not for you. Yeah. And so like, I, 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 I do think it's great that the venues are going back to the communities. Um, now we're in a position where I do think we need more venues, but I hope, I hope people don't go back to where it was in like the two thousands, like the indie yeah. music boom, where it's just like, Oh yeah, let's just throw a PA uh, up during brunch. It's, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't uptown like that. bar cafe. <laughs> yeah, stand by. Yep. Whoop. We'll get to you. We'll get to you there. That space bar <laughs> betrayed me. Um, but yeah, if, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is Desert Island where I make mixtapes based on my guest ten records they were bringing to a desert island, and the next track happens to be from mannequin pussy and we will get to that <laughs> but um you just heard dismemberment plan at the top of that set jets to brazil rocket boy off of perfecting loneliness in the center and back in your head tegan and sarah the con um this was a fun mixtape to put together because there was a lot of things i had to kind of sudoku of just like oh how do i, how do I get here to here from here to here we mentioned Tom Petty is always Tom. Tom Petty is a is is what a guy, what a guy, what a what a help. He he can he can help you along. Um, but I was super psyched to see the con on the list yeah. because like one great record, two I don't see many appearances from Tegan and Sarah on this show. And re-listening to that record, that's a shame because they yeah. they had some hooks like great, oh. great writing great writing um so yeah back in your head thank you for uh remember having me remember how good that record was and if you're just tuning in making a mixtape for night jobs talking with dan and matt from night jobs and they have a seven inch coming out and if you were with us on the 
off mic conversation. Uh, <laughs> this is not a split seven inch. This is your seven inch. And the get together happened to be releasing a record on this show as well. So this mm -hmm. is the August 5th show? It's what's, what was that? Is this the August 5th show? Yep, that's yes. the August 5th yep. show. It's a double seven inch release with us and the right here. Um, I think their seven inch is called Reckless that they're that they're gonna put out. So both will be available. Uh, we'll have t-shirts as well as records to sell at the show. Um, yeah, ours is, yeah, we're putting out Never Happener. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and uh yeah that uh matt and i really matt really was the one that introduced me to that tegan and sarah album i had never i had heard yeah. tegan and sarah but i'd never and as soon as i heard it i was just just the production on it and their songwriting oh, yeah. ability is incredible and so and then I, what like matt sharp played um, yeah some of it so <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like yeah you know, and yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt Sharp has like the boy. Matt Sharp has lore. <laughs> yeah, he really uh, does. I won't, I won't, I won't get into the extent of the lore on Mike because I feel like that will start a whole can of worms. Uh, but off Mike, if you, if you, if you are picking up what I'm putting down or what I'm implying, uh, what we're about to talk to, follow us on YouTube and Facebook talking with night jobs here but first we're going to listen to this <laughs> underrated cards yeah matt sharp uh people think is like you know like a space jam where it's just like mj's secret stuff like everyone thinks that's like weezer's secret stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i, have I mean when he left the band, though, like it, him and Rivers were like a writing partners. Were they really? Yeah. Um, Dang. And so, of course, things changed uh, yeah. after. But uh, he definitely did not make make Weezer. Right. No, no. I see. That's where. That's where I kind of like. Uh, that's kind of where I side with like Tyler Mahan Co. a little bit, where it's just like, yeah, did Matt Sharp add some fun things to like the production and the arrangement of Blue? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. But like, it's Rivers Cuomo. Yeah. Like, Rivers Cuomo was going to find anyone to sing high pitched harmonies in the background. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> like, there's, there's, like, it, it, you can't deny uh, what he brought to the table because if you listen to the rentals record there's some songs on there where it's just like oh this is the best song weezer never put out you know yeah like, right yeah a lot of great songs on that but like ha yeah there is like a little bit of like fuel for that conspiracy fire but i do think at the end of the day if matt didn't leave then he would have left eventually because rivers is rivers yeah <laughs> right. and yeah. and they found their way to another great bass player right in the end right. so yeah it all, it, 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 it all I, I i think it all worked out well for me. yeah yeah <laughs> i think everybody did fine yeah, yeah. i think they're doing yeah it. Hey, hey hey y'all i'm gonna i'm gonna duck out real quick i'll be right back yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. um i see so yeah i had no idea Matt Sharp was on that record. That is a that's kind of a cool, a cool piece of trivia. All right, I'm gonna try yeah. to time this play button here. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. One of the most fun bands to say on the radio because I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. Mannequin pussy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I I love when bands do that to people, though. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, where it's like you can, because there's there's definitely some like um, some like black and doom metal bands that like are just like straight up like this is like. A vulgar word. This is like either like yeah. a curse word or like a regional curse word from where they're from or whatever. Yeah. This one is like kind of like 
lining riding line but uh, apparently i i've heard they're getting in trouble like i like I, like people are trying to like either not say the name or or uh, you know because they, they keep posting <laughs> stuff on twitter of just like they can't censor all of us if, if we all put the word pussy in our band name like they can't censor all of us so like maybe it's yeah. really kind of getting getting them in trouble I, I i don't know i i have yet to get cited for saying their band name on the air but, uh, <laughs> uh i remember a long time ago in my hometown it was a tiger army show and uh, tiger, tiger. Oh, yeah. uh the yeah. band opening for them was nashville pussy yeah and like on all the radio ads would like they had very strange workarounds to not just to <laughs> say that name <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a what? It's a it's a, a domestic house cat who happens to come from Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what? What what, what what did you think it was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I put I so I picked this song just because it's a sonic to a corn dog. <laughs> you can't name a song corn dog sonnet number seven and yeah. not have me be a little intrigued uh <laughs> but uh, so so how did and i might i i might actually uh ask this uh on the air too if not I blame it on the add how did y'all since you you said you shared uh tegan and sarah um how did y'all come up with this list was this like all a mostly dan <laughs> between you and like you and dan or like are, how many matt picks are there do we have other members of the job <laughs> represented on the list <laughs> uh dan dan assigned it <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. It's a hard question to do. I'm always intrigued when bands do it. We uh we split it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> evenly? Did everyone get like a, a, a representative amount of it? No, Dan likes to uh give me lead singer guff. And so I got I got four picks as opposed to their three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It needs. I mean, it needs. It it needs to happen somehow. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I spent I, my time giving lead singers a hard time, so it's it's come back around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think some lead singers have kind of earned um, yeah. <laughs> earned the guff. Uh, I moved my own gear. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's that. That is a uh, what if you? <laughs> but I don't help with dance drums. <laughs> if you talk to singers, a lot of singers would be like, "What? I move my own gear. Here's the microphone, right now." Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, 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 I am not going to give uh, lead singers too much guff, just because. Uh, I are one, uh, but I, I, I also have played been plenty of bands where I'm not one. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just like I, I I think it's different. It hits different when you've seen both sides of the coin, and uh, I I used to say that to my students too, just because like one of my night jobs is being stage crew. So it's just like you play shows, but I'm also well aware of how the loadout goes. <laughs> yeah it's it's just like one of those things like i try to incorporate uh that into my own loadout routine as well of just you know being professional is just being polite and it's just like look I, the sound techs are just trying to do their job you're just trying to do yours and it just 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 get off stage <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> It just you know like just i like i four band bills oh yeah my God. i can't i've always i've always drugs. tried 
backline for the love of god if you're gonna do this backline <laughs> yeah i've always been uh i've made it a habit like the past few decades like i like being the one who is on and off stage the fastest yeah yeah because it, well, it's it, it makes everyone's night go better it, it honestly does yeah uh, and it, everybody gets a little bit more time yeah and 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 i think um there's a natural ebb and flow too um like that okay we got a few seconds left on this one um okay like the, the flow of the night works better when things are running on time i think oh yeah um and it that, 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 that's just me though stand by okay desaparecidos uh golden parachutes off the payola record sincere engineer uh, Corn Dog Sonnet number seven. There is no way you can put an album on this list with a song title like that and have me not play it. And uh, <laughs> Mannequin Pussy at the top of the set. If you're just tuning in, I am making a mixtape for Night Jobs here on Desert Islands, the show where I make mixtapes based on my guest 10 records they would bring to a desert island. And right now I'm speaking with uh, Matt and I think Dan. Dan, are you still with us? I can't yeah. tell. Him. Am I here? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. You're, okay. You are here. You are here. Great. 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 Okay. Cool. Um, it, uh, if you're following us off mic, uh, please do so. We're on YouTube and the Facebooks, and you can follow us there. If you are doing that, please don't do it while you're driving. The video gets archived, and you can watch it whenever you want. You, you don't have to. You don't have to do. Do it behind the wheel. Um, okay, so let's talk about the seven inch proper because we were kind of talking about the the woes of just getting something on wax to begin with because there was a huge shortage. It took you all like what nine months to to even get your hands on this thing and like the so the uh, the right here also put is this a digital seven inch or did they also have to get wax as well? I believe they had to get wax too. And it's, yeah, it's crazy the the wait time yeah. and how many people are in line. And, uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're also you behind, in, yeah, well, you're also behind like the Disney Fast Pass where like Taylor Swift and like Adele, yeah, have, like, act, actually, we can cut the line and we can get, yeah. we can get tens yeah. of thousands of our records. Yeah. Uh, thanks for yeah. playing. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get to wait behind the Foo Fighters who just decided yeah. like the vinyl is cool again, so yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's somebody somebody advised them you know their management advised them hey guys you should do records again <laughs> and, and, uh, and i know i know a lot of that is uh not really the artists themselves as much no, as like, no. The, the, the machine behind them going like hey we need this we need this we need this and we need this mm -hmm. uh they probably weren't even aware it was happening until twitter started getting big mad and, and and I get it, but but let's talk about the production of the the record itself. Because uh, one, putting on a seven inch is hard enough. But how did y'all uh, come about with this? Because you put something out in uh, the thick of COVID, right? Was this mm -hmm. was this stuff that was just like, ah, oh, these are good cuts. I don't know if they're gonna make this record, or was this you already had these songs, where it's like we got to record these two, or did follow up follow up the release of your uh last record just go like hey we, we got this let's do it like how how did you get together and pull this off in uh these strange strange times i mean we've been we've been kind of moving along with the idea of not writing a whole proper lp and just keep yeah. pumping out yeah. eps um yeah. i like and that. yeah it's that's a, a lot of Dan's thinking on that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm also such a slow writer that an LP would take us four years. <laughs> yeah, I, and I was we had a lot of what we had done before was uh Matt's kind of solo, some of his solo stuff, it was all kind of cobbled together from his solo records and us turning them into actually full band songs um you know with some exceptions matt it was mostly an acoustic 
uh, mostly acoustic stuff. And then we lifted a couple from old projects. Um, and I was psyched to get this recorded, this batch of songs recorded because um, we just uh, got our, our, new ba- our, our new bass player. His name is Christian. He, he was the one that had the Tom Petty and the Jets to Brazil. Um, and so, and uh, so I was, I was excited to kind of hear what the band sounded like now with Christian and us being uh, a bit, you know, a bit older. And these songs all uh, three out of four of these songs came together as a band, as opposed yeah. to just getting stuff from, you know, taking stuff from old projects or whatever. So, um, yeah, so we did it with uh, Adam Tucker at Signature Tone, who I can't recommend oh, enough. Yeah, if you're looking yeah. for somebody to record with, he's great. Um, really, really gets things. Um, and um, for me, it was always sort of on my my musical bucket list to do a 7-inch because that's just, you know, for being sure. a punk yeah. rock kid, that's just how I grew up. So everybody's <laughs> doing 7-inches and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that was it. And so it just kind of all came together of course like you had mentioned the back uh the backlog for vinyl is most bands were waiting six to nine months um it's extensive yeah yeah and i just and this was before we even found out that apparently we're getting our own vinyl pressing plant in town that's going to open or is already open so i would have loved to do it through that i don't know i i haven't kept up with it so yeah. yeah i don't i don't know what the timeline is on that but i yeah. i'm pretty excited about that because like uh i think it's just time i'm with jack white on this one I, I i think if the major labels are gonna tip the scales of demand they should build their own pressing plants again mm-hmm. straight up yeah straight absolutely up. yeah because because if, if major labels are using indie pressing plants to get their stuff done like what what are we doing here like mm. this is not a this this isn't niche anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah. it's 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 cool that more people are taking initiative and and making these plants for the for themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean the people who are putting in those big orders too. Like you guys are the ones actually making money off like Spotify. And... Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. We're like we're like gonna break even on this and. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like it so it, it does seem a little a little weird and I, I i think i i'm more like i'm not gonna hate on uh swifty or adele I, like i because they're just artists doing their thing but like the, the machine knows what it's doing and, yeah. and oh, they're, yeah. they're just being lazy <laughs> well, well yeah i mean for us it is really it's it's a labor of love i feel like for a lot of DIY or, artists, whereas well, labor the love are still labor. <laughs> yeah, they're still labor. And, <laughs> and, you know, for so many of those record labels, they've been they've been panicking, trying to find out how they can re-commodify music again, you know, right. in a physical medium, so they can mm-hmm. have their, you know, their ones and their or their, you know, their their bean counters or whatever. And that's just not. Yeah, that's not what we're looking for. I also want to clarify with uh, specifically Taylor Swift. Uh, she is currently doing the most punk rock thing ever, yeah. and that's just re-recording albums to not yeah. only own it again, but to drive yeah. down the value of the older works that shareholders have. It's it's yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> like that that that's a Prince move. Really, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, which is why he like changed his name to that symbol was to get out of his record contract so he could. But I mean, like that, yeah, that is yeah. like you know, just like okay, you're not going to give me my masters, fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you happen now. That is that is kind of a cool move. Um, and and that so once again reiterating, like I I utmost respect for the artist, and I I actually done the la- last couple records uh, T Swift put out. And that Adele record, um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame them for wanting to put out a record, you know. Like it, it's just like just because you are one of the biggest artists of the on the planet doesn't mean you don't still love making music and you just want to put stuff out there. Um, but the the business is, yeah, 
it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are close to the top of the hour here at KFAI Fresh Air Community Radio, uh, 90.3 FM in Minneapolis and around the world at KFAI.org. If you're just tuning in, this is Desert Islands. This is the show where I make mixtapes based on my guests, 10 records they would bring to a desert island. Today I'm making one for night jobs. Um, and I've been yakking a little bit. Normally this is the point where it's just like, hey, let's hear that. Uh, but the mixtape is <laughs> just not there yet. And I, I'm not comfortable skipping. I, 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 I don't get comfortable skipping around on the mixtape. So here's Riddle of Steel here on KFA. Um, yeah, so after uh, two more sets of music, and then hopefully uh, we'll do the local calendar, and then we'll spin um, your stuff, and then some local music. Uh, I just hope, because I'm streaming it. Normally the music I have is downloaded, I hope. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I get you. Yeah. That is, uh, is, is, is gonna, cause, cause that is, that is the problem is like sometimes, uh, when meetings happen and then when other people are recording their shows and like everyone's using the internet, sometimes it gets mm. a little weird. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping nothing bad is going to happen. Um, uh, I remember back in the day when I was, make an actual 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 mixtapes and i would use yeah, yeah. youtube and make a playlist and i'd walk away come back a half hour later and be like oh it stopped yeah. <laughs> i gotta start over yeah yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's like a there's a lot of like it's it's funny because like I, I I I hear like a lot of the the boomer takes of just like ah oh, back in our day like you kids don't know the struggle and it's just like oh no there's there there are Gen Z Gen Y millennial <laughs> struggles as well and some of them are that whole thing or uh, in the early days of like Kazaa and Napster and LimeWire. Oh like, yeah. Uh, like, I just want to download one system of a down song. I'm going to start it at 6 a.m. before I go to school. Then you download it, and it's like some mislabeled Hoobastank file. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, it's like, and then you gave your family computer a bunch of viruses for nothing. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> like there's, there's, there's definitely there's, there's it's the same struggle just different different masks. Yeah, <laughs> different I, masks. I, I all I think all Hoobastank files came preloaded with viruses, right? It just <laughs> if, <you're, laughs> oh, shade. if I ever met those guys, I like I I my one question would be like, fellas, congrats on the career, but like, how did you come up with the name? Oh, it's a funny story. No, no, I don't mean come up with it. I mean like you came up with that name, and you stuck with it. Right. That you was ran that was with the, it. Yeah, that was the bit you're gonna commit. Like how? Like what were the other names? <laughs> I'm I'm a I am a I am a firm believer though, and I will stand by this. Every band name is dumb. No, they're all dumb. No, they're, they're all dumb. dumb. It's. <laughs> The biggest okay. band of all time is named the Beatles. That's the stupidest thing yeah. I've ever heard in my life. They're like, no, you don't get it. We, get it. we change, we change the, the, the yeah, spelling. You know, so it's like, like B that's even dumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you somehow made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a. Hold on, I'm getting a call here, but I don't know how to. Uh oh, hold on. There hold we on. go. That's see, see here. Here's the problem with our new phone system being on Zoom. Is when we get a call, if I'm already on Zoom, I'm like worried the whole thing would like, like which call gets dropped. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Now, now, now I feel bad for ignoring. The phone calls coming in, mm -hmm. like uh, oh, so you guys—they took the landline completely out. 
Well, it's it's here, but like when you get a call, okay. it, it it pops up on Zoom, hmm. and and <laughs> just bring them in. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah that, that, that's well, that's the thing. I think that's why Mason switched to Streamyard, so they're different. Oh, oh like, yeah. I've tried to set up the webcam when Zoom is up, and it it sometimes doesn't like where it's just like, hey, another 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 program's using the webcam and it's just like i so like if people are if 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 the person uh tuning in to, uh to this just called i am not ignoring you i'm just honestly worried about <laughs> dropping you or night jobs or both <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and i i i just don't wanna i don't wanna go there i appreciate you you calling um and then this is kind of why Discord is fun, but I don't I don't know where the Discord went. Where 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 did that go? But yeah, and I, even then, I, I I'm not the best at responding to stuff like real time, just because like you like Dan, you know of just like there's a lot of screens in here. There are yeah, and there's a lot going on. Yeah, and I I just I just you know the best I usually can do is like I'll 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 send an emoji. Like if people send stuff, like I'll react to it with like, yeah. uh, like oh ha ha, or like thumbs up, or rocker hand, or peace or whatever. That that's like that is the best I can muster, because uh, it's a live radio, and mm -hmm. you know I got to make sure stuff is radioing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, moving along. Um, but yeah, I still haven't figured out the new call system. Uh, just because it's like, well, it works for me if um, if the guest is calling in, because then I don't have to worry about the 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 webcam or the whatever. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm still trying to work out my system for it. And right yeah. now, my system is carte blanche, ignoring everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so apologies for that i'm not trying to be a snob i just don't like i don't know once this call gets dropped resetting it up and then like you're basically just tap dancing i'm just like hey you're mm -hmm. listening to uh type you like typing sounds in the background just to get it back up and yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's two hours of live radio uh it, it, if it's important please send us a message <laughs> yeah, yeah. If something's on fire, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Well, but... well it's, it's, sometimes I would get, uh, I would get calls, um, like during the school year. There's this cat who drives a bus, and um, to and fro, he would listen to KFAI, and then during his off time, because uh, this I used to be uh, late afternoons. So he would yeah. call me, he would call me then right as he was, you know, like finishing dropping the kids off of his roof. Mm -hmm. And he would just tell me stories of like this one time, like he would be like, oh yeah, like you like James Bond movies? I was just like, oh, I mean, I see him as a kid. And he would just like tell me these stories. Just like, okay, the character Jaws from this James Bond movie, you know, like, and he would just like, he would just go out and I'm like, like, oh, cool. Hey, thanks for calling. I got to do an on air break. So, so I got to let you go. He's like, oh yeah, no problem. No problem. And then, like, I'll hang up, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then you do the on-air on break. And then you finish the break, you play another song, phone rings. Same guy. Oh, like, no. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Moonraker. Uh, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so they, but, like, I, I actually kind of dug that. Like, it was, it was mm -hmm. kind of fun to just get random calls from people in the community. Because, one, you know people are listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The thing, the thing that was always, it was uh, when I when I'd be on there with Barb and Mason, yeah. Um, Mason and I would always give Barb a wrath of shit and just be like, "No, nah, just throw him on the air, Barb. Come on, just throw him on the air." You know, people call and <laughs> she'd be like, "No way," because like you know, because KFI doesn't have like a flat catcher. You know, they don't have anybody screening calls, so yeah, Lord knows what what's gonna happen. But you well, know. I, I Barb. I, I think 
Barb Barb is seen too much. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly like, right. Like she she started radio in Cincinnati. She yeah. was hired by the current, fired yeah. by the current, hired by the current. You know, like she like she is entitled to putting up that boundary. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, as, as a I, woman, I, I, as a woman in radio, I think she's more than you know. Like, oh yeah, I wouldn't want to put up with that either. Good lord, no. But also, I always admire Mason's moxie. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, just roll the dice. <laughs> just do it. Go for it. <laughs> like, one of my favorite things about Mason. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why not? It's gonna be. It, let's call it edutainment. We'll yeah, exactly. After this, <laughs> just a stranger from the wild. Let it yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I I kind of miss the landline because I could answer and then there were times where it's just like you could kind of like it was like an old like uh Albert Brooks bit or something like the other <laughs> people kind of like infer what I was talking about yeah the people because you could like see me talking to them but like yeah now I I I just don't I because I don't pre-tape yeah uh, I mean sometimes I, I pre-tape when I have to you know like emergencies or like i know i'm going to be not in minnesota where it's just like all right just kind of do these and but like i i don't pre-tape because i think the show is better for it right you know like there's so many things that go into a pre-tape like once you start talking about something especially the inane stuff like where you just like you like whoa we just did 20 minutes about thundercats or whatever right you know, like that you can't you can't just like, oh, we didn't get that. Um, can we talk about Thundercats again? We need to re-record it. Like it just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work. Um, so I try not to, but mainly it's quicker for me to just do a live take and then the video's there and then you repost it and then it's just like on to the next one because otherwise my ADD brain will find the one thing that's wrong and they're like, wait, how do we fix the now I can fix this. I can edit. Oh, I can just put this part, and then it's just like you just wasted <laughs> so much time on this on this thing that it's like it's fine. It would have been fine with a with a like it's you know. Uh, so I I just do it this way so I can keep going, <laughs> <laughs> keep keep ahead of the thing. All right. So uh, after Slater Kinney, is it Slater Kinney or Slater? I never I've, know. I've I've heard both ways. <laughs> yeah, I know people on the West Coast. It's like the road. They say it's Slater Kinney Road. Like the, when the, I, yeah. the road I was watch, I was watching them the other night and uh, a Letterman appearance, and he says uh, Slater Kinney. Slater? Yeah. And I feel like he would have been advised. <laughs> yeah. No, that, yeah. that's that's a, But maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Cuz I I asked that very question on Facebook and I got all kinds <laughs> of different answers, man. I have no clue. I but people I, like I, kind of upset about me asking <laughs> which one it was. Yeah, like how it, dare you? It's Sleater Kenny like yeah. and, and that's that's my favorite thing is like when people are like how dare you? It's wrong answer yeah right yeah <laughs> like exactly. the <righteous> indignation <laughs> right. and like there's like camp <laughs> like it's like it's like a schism within like the fan base <laughs> yeah how about and, i buy their records and i call them whatever i want because now they have my money so i'll that, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah they're probably well, Carrie, the Carrie Brownstein of, will be like yeah whatever <laughs> in the era of the internet i just try to find videos where someone from the band is saying their name yeah yeah that's a good idea Oh, uh, to bring it back around, there's a, it's an old, I think it's still on YouTube. There's an old thing where Tegan and Sarah are arguing about the uh, instrument. Is it a Moog or a Moog? Yeah, yeah. And they end up, they end up straight up calling the company <laughs> just to like find out. Yeah. I think it, I think it is Moog. Yeah, that's, that's what their, uh, their phone system says. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, he worked right. that out. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Slater Kinney. We were discussing <laughs> Kinney Sle Slater. Slater. Come on. I, I, it's, Slater. I, I, <laughs> it's 
like Price is Right. I feel like it's just like, rah, 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 like I'm looking for yeah. like, uh, $1, Bob. Uh, mm -hmm. Slater Kinney, Modern Girl, Hopalong, Sister Cities, and oh, Hopalong. Uh, Hopalong is an underrated band. I think they're often overlooked for how cool they are. Francis has got yeah. the coolest voice out of yeah. anybody out there, right? In my they opinion. Rip. Sure. They rip. Yeah. yeah. They're a great band. Um, <laughs> so if you're just tuning in, I'm making a mixtape here on Desert Islands for Night Jobs. They have a uh, seven inch coming out out and then you're going to celebrate the release of said seven inch uh at palmer's august That's 5th awesome. uh and it's outside and so, so who's on this bill because we were talking about you're sharing a double release but you have linus and dingus or just Linus? yeah mm -hmm. both okay yeah. both yes and yes and so yeah. this is a four band bill outside uh double release show and uh so you you took so long to get the seven inches out you have you have the date set up um and we're gonna listen to a track uh coming up here but for those tuning in now since we're at the top of a new hour when do things get started are you at liberty to talk about set times who's starting the show who's who's ending the show how are you handling a double release who, who do you flip is it like the is it, is it like the Super Bowl? Do you just get heads or tails? Who who gets uh, the ball? It's, it's not pretty. <laughs> I, I think if well, if, okay, well, so I believe the show runs. I, I can say with fifty one percent certainty that the show runs from six p.m. to ten p.m. So I think okay. doors are at six. Um, it's a and it, it's a online ticket sales um, and. So, as it's currently constructed, Dingus is starting at seven. Okay. And then after they're done, we play. And then the right here is after us. And then Linus is finishing the show out. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, it looks like I have been doing quite a bit of talking. Uh, so we won't have time for the entire mixtape. And I want to move things along because we have some local music coming up, including something off of the night job seven inch uh also some brother ali uh some graveyard club some careful gaze some loser magnet and all that is coming up soon but first here's some jawbreaker here on yeah. um yeah i just realized it's like 11 15 uh so i want to i want to make sure <laughs> We get as much local music in as possible because we're yeah. probably not going to have time for for the entire mixtape. I'll post the whole thing. Uh, I'll post the whole link un under the uh, under this video here. Okay. Uh, and well, on, on social media, I have not been good about posting it on the YouTube, mainly because I don't have access to the station YouTube, and that's oh, just, okay. Like, that's like just another link. I guess I could comment on the video, but that. Yeah. Would, you know, maybe maybe uh, that that maybe that'll be like my project when I actually have free time, uh, <laughs> which I don't uh, because I'm I don't know. On top of all this, like I, I I'm moving. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I'm moving across the river. I'm not I, there. Yeah, not too not too far. Just just back to St. Paul. Keep St. Paul boring. Man, I'm telling <laughs> you, I. It just seems like more and more musicians and artists are ending up over here. <laughs> I, uh, dig I'm a... it. Oh, I dig it. Like I, I, I personally, um, well, I'm also, I'm also an introvert. Like I'm not shy. I'm not afraid yeah. of interaction. It's just like, I, I have to recharge after it. So it's not like I, I dislike interacting with people. It's just like, after I'm done, I feel like I put in a ship. So I got to like, and St. Paul is way more conducive to be like, hey, I did my thing, and now I'm just going to yeah, no, slink yeah. back. Um, yeah, but, I'm, a, I'm a recent convert. and so yeah. <laughs> Also, that being said, I, I don't think St. Paul is as boring as people want to say it is. I think it gets that rap because things close early. But there's mm -hmm. actually yeah. a lot of stuff on that side of the river that you can't get on this side of the river. 
mainly food. There's some food you just can't. I mean, like I've had some good Bon Mies in Minneapolis, but mm, mm -hmm. the best ones I've had came out of St. Paul. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, 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 I mean, I celebrate each. I mean, I celebrate both towns for different reasons. Oh, abso know? absolutely, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I definitely think for me, um, it, I, I might become that towny cliche of live in st paul party in minneapolis i i, I oh might, yeah yeah, yeah. Might have um what well, part of st paul are you moving to uh kind of near um the turf club actually oh sure yeah no uh, That's... right near uh hamlin not oh uh, yeah we'll be which is a cool neighborhood. <laughs> I really did that neighborhood a lot yeah and uh but it, it's it's also just you know closer to a few of my gigs you know mm -hmm. um it's closer to where i teach at it you know the turf club is right there and yeah. uh so <clears throat> it, it, it is just one of those things that i i think for me it's just kind of uh the right time also also let me just let me just let me just point at the elephant in the room it's cheaper it's cheaper oh, yeah. It's way oh, yeah. cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, Have you ever played uh, that Ginkgo Coffee House that's down there on uh, University? I have not, but I, I have seen shows there, and they yeah. do a good job there. Um, yeah. I, I it, It's a shame because I forget that place is there because they do do good stuff there. Mm. But, yeah, we're we're kind of right, right near that spot. That's, yeah. that's kind of what we're aiming for. Yeah. Um, it's a great – it's a <clears throat> It really is. Yeah. State yeah. fair might be a little interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to go on vacation for those ten days. Just stay out of that. Stay out of that neighborhood. But oh uh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think about that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be moving like right while all that's going on. Oh right? really? Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's mainly. That's mainly kind of like why everything's been like taken forever because it's just like I. I'm making progress on all this stuff, but life is just kind of getting in the way of like it's every every night I'm trying to like mix this EP a little, yeah. And then I get fatigue, and I'm like, okay, right. and then I got to go to work, and then I got to focus on this, and then I got to find. <laughs> so it's like it's it's yeah, it, life has been very transitional this yeah. year. I feel like I, I feel like I've been bouncing in between several places, and then uh life also goes on so i can't like just stop uh mm -hmm. so you kind of have to like do the gigs work the gigs come back and finish the thing so how so know. how does it i i guess i'm kind of curious so how how is it being kind of i mean what are the pros and cons of being a solo artist in minneapolis st paul i i mean um <laughs> i like it because um i think it's more sustainable mm -hmm. um because let's be real the pay for a solo artist is the same for a band yeah. um Interesting. So when you get those when you get those nights where like uh the payout is just like fellas fellas great night thanks for thanks for doing uh here's twenty dollars um for a band, that's humiliating. For me, that that is something. Yeah. Um, and I I was in a I, I was in a bunch of bands years ago, and I, I I definitely like being in bands. It was just when you're the front of bands. Um there's this constant pressure to like keep things going mm -hmm. uh and then it, it just like it just became hard to pay people and then like there's only so long you can do that thing as a band where it's like now nah, all for one and one for all like eventually people are like yeah that worked when i was in my 20s but like i got a mortgage and kids yeah. and i kind of so it like i kind of just went 
solo because I was just like, I felt like I was bothering people to like keep a band going. And I, I that's not what I wanted to get into music for. Like I, I, I wanted it to be like a, a enjoyable. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I, I went solo to scratch the itch of like all the stupid ideas I had in bands like just use that as a vehicle to to do that um and uh and i, I, I it, it's been it's been fun i i don't think it it, it it translates to uh people outside of my niche audience just because like the the recordings of stuff i do are like they're always they're almost like performance art or like stunts more than you know like they're they're live record like they're you know like the dumb ideas i wanted to do in a band where it's like let's record a whole album in a hotel room it's like yeah. why that sounds really hard it's like let's record a whole album outside it's like well we could just you know we could have indoor plumbing and like a, a roof and <laughs> uh, like we could we can just record in a studio and be done quicker yeah. Um, so it just kind of became like a, oh, with this, I can just do whatever I want and I'm not going to piss anyone off. I'm not going to make anyone's life any harder than it is. Um, but it also allowed me to like join other people's bands. So it's like joining LPF was like really fun just because mm. Rennell, like I love the way she runs the ship. Like she runs it very similar to the way I did, like very, like very detail oriented. So it's like very cool where it's like okay she's got it like mm. um and i don't have to worry and i can just sit back and be like don't ask me i'm just the guitar player. i'm just the guitar player <laughs> yeah. yeah stand by okay so we just had live braid uh well a live album from braid uh yes. <laughs> Gossy, break and call breaker at the top of that set so let's talk about some things happening this week and beyond because this weekend is so stacked it's insane and then we'll talk about night jobs release i'll let them talk about it but tonight uh trio bossa nova at landmark center this is at noon so uh after after this show head to saint paul and take in the finale of this summer series at the landmark center featuring trio bossa nova Tomorrow, also in St. Paul, Lower Town Sounds, We Are the Willows, and Folios will be at Mears Park at 6 p.m. Uh, also in St. Paul, Anvil. Uh, if, if you've ever seen that documentary about those guys. Anvil. Anvil is coming to town. Wow. And you just, you just want to root for those guys. Yeah. But uh, DJ Paper Sleeves, Danny Seigelman is going to open the night. And then Midnight Hellion and White Wizard are going to be opening for Anvil, the turf club. So, Friday. This is this is going to be the start of the 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 big the big Palm Fest weekend, and there's a lot of festival things happening this weekend. So Palm Fest, Big Salt Whiskey Rock and Roll Club, Nato Coles and the Blue Diamond Band, Eleganza, Cole Mustard Brass Band, Butter Boys, Carnage, Appetite for Sicardi, Fistful of Datas. This is just Friday. This is just this is just Friday, um, and yeah. It goes on. It goes on. But also Friday, American Scarecrow's release show. We talked to Seth last week. Uh, it is happening this Friday with Lutheran Heat at the Amsterdam. Marie and the Coins, Faith Boblet, and Dark Bunny are also at the entry on Friday. Uh, also, Friday and Saturday, 319 Fest. So you, you might want to ask a punk for this because uh, this is a house venue, a long-beloved house venue. Great shows, great comedy. Uh, and it's been doing this for a few years, but not anymore so the lineup is going to include joe bartell loser magnet butter boys national park service kate malenafee uh sad boy dave uh dave on bland uh many 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 more but this is a house venue so please ask a punk for the address dm the 319 club <laughs> for the address uh i i i this is a radio station and i don't want to uh overwhelm someone's household uh but yeah that is also happening starting on friday and then saturday palm fest continues real chuck no rad super flasher finesse little lizard river sinclair betty won't diane lifestyle shakes the extra terrestrials the mood swings scrunchies monica laplante low rats 
Mad Mojo Jet, Sim 1, Toussaint Morrison, Larry Wish, and Don 11 a.m. at Palmer's. And then at night, Graveyard Club, Glee Show with Aaron Rice. We're hopefully going to get to their track as well. Uh, Grumpy's Big Kahuna Bash featuring the Trashman's Tony Anderson. So this is going to have the Phantom Surfers, uh, Tati and Island Boy, and Phantom Surfers, the Swangos, uh, Deke Dickerson, and the Surf Dogs. So this is uh, the last Grumpy's event in Roseville before they close, unfortunately. That's a speaking oh. of closing venues. Yeah, this is this is happening this weekend. And then 319 Fest is also going to close as well. Sunday, Long oh, Fest continues. Brass Messengers, Buffalo Galaxy, Lens and Friends, Union Suits, Holly Brandt, Michael Gay, the Sap Suckers, Cornbread Harris, Romantica, the Cactus Blossoms, Jeffrey Robert Larson and Claire Doyle, Jack Clatt, Colt Diamond, Red Wing Blackbird, uh, and then Rigby oh. is going to uh, conclude their tour. Uh, the band Rigby, Twin Cities band Rigby, went on a West Coast tour and even international tour. They played some Canadian shows. Good, good for those kids. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to come home uh, and play the Seventh Street entry with Floodwater Angel and Hayes. Gazer. Uh, looking ahead, Venus to Mars is going to finish her Tuesday residency series at 331. Death Valley Girls, uh, Black Widows are going to open for them at Mortimer's. Yellow Ostrich, Bathtub Sig, and Damien. Damien is uh, Alan Sparhawk. It's new. So Alan Sparhawk from Low has a new project, and that is going to be at the 7th Street entry uh, on Tuesday night. And of course, uh, LPF's release show at the entry August 5th. Uh, you know what else is August 5th? Your release show at Palmer's. So let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So we got uh, right here, Dingus, Linus, mm. y'all. Palmer's. It's on the patio. Uh, let's talk about this 7-inch. Now, I, I, I want to try to stream a, a, a track from this here. Um, if folks like what they hear, where can they get this? their hands on a 7-inch? Can they order it from your website? Can they get it from a, from a, a place where they have to physically go to? Uh, if they like where they hear, how can they hear it again? Uh, you can go on to nightjobs.bandcamp.com. And we're currently doing uh, pre-orders because I'm a one-man show. So I'm going to have to put <laughs> all of these things together. And yeah. so I just need a little time to wrap my head around who needs it's, what and when they can get it. It'll uh, be there. It'll be yeah, there. Just it'll time. be there. Yeah. So... Uh, then yeah, it'll go live on our Bandcamp page on the fifth, uh, and after that, we, uh, all uh, hopefully everything goes smoothly. It'll be at Extreme Noise. It'll be at Cadence Coffee. It'll be at you know uh, any fine retailer that you love can think them. of. So love those places. They do a good yeah. job. Speaking of doing a good job, uh, let's listen to the new night jobs here on KFAI. Is it doing that thing? Internet woes. Internet woes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to have to do an old night jobs tune. Ah, sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry. just going to have to play something off of your old EP. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, speaking of grumpies, we'll, I'll just play grumpies northeast. <laughs> yeah. yeah and and yeah I'm, I'm sorry that happened I, I i don't know it's given me the spinny wheel of death it is still trying to load the thing and i had it i had it yeah all right well hopefully 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 we can get something i will try to reload this and try to play it later later in the show but okay. For the meantime, I just wanted to make sure we didn't have dead air. Yeah. Uh, do you? I mean, do you want me to send you uh, an MP3 of it, or or a couple of tracks, or? Yeah, if, if that that would be cool. Be yeah, cool. I can do that. Good. Um, <laughs> the just <laughs> landlord. <laughs> landlord and Bob, right? Bob, there's not a. Oh, I was going to do Landlord. I was going to do Landlord. Yeah, yeah. Landlord, safe bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I got I got out I got overruled in the studio and uh, took all the expletives out. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a good decision. <laughs> it always is. It always is. Oh, it's just like I I try I like anytime I play something with an expletive on it, it's always by accident and I always feel bad because it's just like it's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, email it to 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 Desert Islands at KFAI. Okay. And and I'll I'll see see if we can. Can't get this going. Okay, yeah. Um, just Yeah. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Waiting for it to show up on my end. While I'm waiting for that, I'll just keep going yeah. with the local stuff, and then after the break, I'll just try to come out of it here. Is there a uh, does KFAI have a? Uh, do you have like a size limit on emails that y'all can accept? Or um, yeah. I I don't think so. Hold okay. on. Oh, here it is. Okay, okay cool. This with a little. <clears throat> delay okay right. i remember what you were talking about earlier the like solo thing yeah. yeah uh when i was doing that most of it was like a bunch of basements and stuff no pay but i played yeah. a show in portland oregon and it was two other bands and i remember like it's i got handed like 200 bucks oh yeah. wow and it was just me and i was like no, you guys should take more. Yeah. Like, no, nah, yeah. dude, you dr you drove here too, and I was like, yeah. yeah, in a Honda Civic with an acoustic. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so funny, like how tough this business is that like we have conditioned ourselves to be like caged animals, where it's just like, yeah, you're you're allowed to look at the sun. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's and but yeah, like I kind of had a a similar moment with that, um, it, like just because it, it was like a the first show I did was like a similar thing where it's just like, wait a minute, I'm being treated like a person, You're right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and it, um, but a, a lot of it was mainly, um, life started getting in the way. I had to try to figure out how to pay back my student loans because, you know, the whole program of being a public school teacher for 10 years <laughs> didn't work out in the Trump administration. Uh, oh, I'm going to apply again, but, uh, you know, so it's just like, ah, oh, you just got to work. And it just became harder to, like, keep a band down. And then I had to, like, I had to, like, stop being in this band. And then and then I had to stop being in this band. And then, like, this band kind of fell apart uh, just because, you know, it's hard to keep a band together. And then I tried doing that thing where it's like, oh, I'll just be in other people's bands because that'll be less work. And it's just mm -hmm. like, it's really, it is less work, but it still, it still adds up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just and then kind of, it just kind of became a thing where it's just like it was way easier for me to kind of like be a bedroom guitarist and come up yeah. with like own things and then like periodically arrange like 
stuff to like and like emerge like i like i would i would hit up like plums open mic to test out new stuff and then mm -hmm. like eventually it just kind of became this weird thing where it's like hey do you want to open for us at this and i was like oh yeah let me ask um the band and they're like no they sell we want so like it, it kind of just became this weird thing where like more people kept asking for that so i just kept doing it and then it it it, it just kind of became a natural process like i don't know if it's just like my uh natural like natural habitat is to just like go back to a dark cool room <laughs> Know, where I'm just alone anyway. Yeah, um, I mean that's why I originally did it. Uh, the three bands I was in broke up, and then Dan moved to Denver, so I was like, "Well, I'm just yeah. gonna do that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, this, is, this is what it's gonna be. Yeah, and sometimes uh, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm jealous of solo people that can do be it stand up comedians or yes. solo musicians where it's they all they have is themselves to sort of depend on and you know, promote and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of me wondering how the other half lives. Like I've played a couple of right. solo shows, but certainly nothing that I've I've pursued. You know, right? And it's I I don't know. Like I I like it better. I, I'm getting. I'm getting, I'm getting calls all over the place. I, I, hope, Is this the FCC not. call? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Are, are there are there curse words in Grumpy's Northeast? I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Uh, no, there are not. <laughs> okay. There you go. Perfect. Well, all right. Well, maybe. Maybe it's just someone who really likes capital sums. I, I don't know. Oh, it could be. Maybe they like they really like loser magnet. They're a, they're a cool man. Um, how is uh how's Renell handling the Los Angeles? She loves it. Oh, I um, sure. And I think uh, well, like for her, she kind of had like the perfect transition out there. Um, Oh, okay. So it, instead of coming back, I'm just going to play these underwriting cards. We're just going to let this track ride and then I'm going to play that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll be back for a talk break just because um, we actually have like less than 20 minutes left in the show. So if okay. I don't do it now, I'm going to forget. Um, and I don't know. Ho hopefully they weren't calling because I, I missed that. I've had that happen. I've had businesses call in and be like, hey, do you play that spot at like 923? I was like, I oh, really? It. 915 you know like so like that does happen mm. i don't know um and I, I i i get it people it's like that episode of the simpsons where like they make a commercial for mr plow and they wait till like 4 a.m to like right. to watch yeah. the like, i get it i get it it's it's like it can be exciting yeah. um but I'm, I'm i'm not doing it out of malice i am doing it out of sheer adhd madness and yeah. <laughs> same know, thing just, same thing with my camera i don't know why my camera's not working <laughs> anymore and i'm not like pulling I, a desk, just glad, I'm not pulling, like, a desk or anything like that i'm just my camera doesn't work I don't know why. <laughs> yeah no dude it it knows you're the drummer <laughs> that, <laughs> i'm giving you i'm shooting you such a look right now and you can't, you can't even see it, can't even see it. <laughs> no i mean that's normal i'm always i'm never facing you that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, now that, now that's banter. So, uh, so banter, baby. Doc, more on this solo thing. How does so you? Uh, just, I'm, I'm looking for more, like, because I need to get out of this band like as soon as possible. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just doing uh, a how-to on my musical career path right now. That's why. No, I, 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 for me, like. I uh, found that it's it, you're right. It is a lot like stand-up comedy, where it's just like, yeah, it's just yourself. But I, I will say, like, because it's just yourself, you really have to be very picky about the arrangements, because mm. um, otherwise, it gets 
Um, otherwise, it, it gets really hard to like do full sets, if that makes sense. Like, I, yeah. I think like, the solo thing works for like, oh yeah, 20 minutes, but like, you know, like the, when you get booked, it's like indiscriminate. They're just like, we have an act, we have three hours and someone needs to fill it. Right. Um, so like it, it, it becomes easier for the commute, but the craft itself doesn't get any easier. I, like you still have to put in um, a lot of like, uh, but it's almost like a puzzle. Like you, you just kind of have to figure it out. But I, I think it's not like harder or easier. I think it's the same. It's just like a different yeah. language where like some people kind of grok to the solo thing a little bit easier where like some people are like get me out of this this sucks i That's, hate it yeah you know? that was and, me <laughs> yeah yeah so like i i i think it's whatever floats your submarine you know like yeah. whatever keeps you more comfortable on stage is the right answer mm -hmm. um because I, I i knew a lot of people who went solo a few years back thinking like oh this is this is what's going to break my career and it's just like well no i i think you just gotta i think you just gotta do the thing you would already end up doing anyway mm, yeah and then because there's no guarantee that's gonna work either so it's like I, I think you just like whatever fits into your like normal modus operandi that that's where you should go because like it's it's hard like it's like growing a garden, you know, like, yeah, it's easy, but it's also hard, you know, right. like writing songs is like, you can just do it, but it's also like, it's hard. Um, <laughs> uh, ooh, so we heard new night jobs and some old night jobs while we were looking. Well, no, we haven't heard new night jobs. We, we heard old night jobs and then we heard new capital sons, new loser magnet. Um, so now, uh, since we have about 15 minutes left in the show we will get to the new night jobs uh but we're also going to get into some local music from uh careful gaze and graveyard club and uh brother ali so uh let's let's uh let's let's do the big wrap up here before we we get going here um been talking with dan and matt from night jobs um is there anything well, first of all, thank you for coming on the show. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, again. yeah. Cool. But uh, second of all, is there anything you would like the listeners to know about uh, before we start packing it in here? Because after, <laughs> after, after what happened, I want to make sure we actually get the new Night Jobs single on the air because uh, you know, technological differences. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but now now we have it, and I want to make sure we have time. So, is there anything yeah. you would like the listeners to know about before we get going? Here? Uh, yeah, no, just we hope to see you on the 5th of August at Palmer's. Us and Linus, right here, Dingus, not in that particular order. Uh, it's going to be a double seven inch release show with us and the right here. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just looking at the calendar for the 5th and going. Whew, there's a lot to choose from that night. So yeah. if you come out yeah. to our show, we'll be exceedingly grateful. Uh, we'll give you a hug if you want one, or at least Matt will. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we appreciate any support. You can give us nightjobs or nightjobs.bandcamp.com if you want to pre-order the new 7-inch. Never Happener is the name. So uh, Matt, you got anything? Yeah, you covered everything. <laughs> I just, I I'll be happy if people come out. I know it's a big weekend for music, so yeah. Well, if you if you dig this tune, head on to Palmer's August fifth. Here is Landlord by Night Jobs. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> Got it. There we go. Stuck yeah. the discount for once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now, yeah, I figure uh, the next three songs are all like five minutes long. Okay. Uh, so I, I figured we would just do that then. And then I I lead into democracy now. So I, I really can't fuck it up. 
<laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like there, there are people who like have been listening to that program every day at noon for like yeah. 20 years and they like to keep it that way. And I do not blame them. I like, it, it, there's a lot of, not many news programs go that hard, you know? And yeah. People, yeah. People, people want to, people want that. Uh, it's a, it's a, and Amy Goodman's doing big work like that. that we're just, <laughs> we're just, we're just the, the kids who got out of detention hanging out in the back of the record store. Like we're, right. <laughs> Absolutely. We're not we're not doing anything too consequential. Um, <laughs> important, important in its own right, but it's, it's you know like we're not we're not going to tank the economy of Bolivia, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Talk, talking about records, you know. Yep. Um, so yeah, we got uh I'm yeah, I'm just glad we got it on cuz this has happened before and I always feel bad when it's just like the Someone gives me a private SoundCloud link and like it works at home and I test it at home before we leave and then I get to KFAI, I test it before the show, and then you press play and it's just like nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm just Brilliant. glad it happened. Um, but then after that, uh, we're not ooh. Save the day in Houston are later in the list. We might not have time for that, but that's why Houston, I. Posted Houston is a local band. Yeah, so what was a local band? <laughs> yeah, that, a local that, band. So who? Yeah, when? Oh. There we go. Just wanted to make sure that started on time, and then that's kind of going to be doing its thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's playing. Okay. Um, Brother Ali. Who is this? Brother Ali. Oh, okay. So who put, yeah, who put Brother Ali on the, uh, who, who's, whose pick was that? That was mine. Nice, nice. Yeah. 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 It's got, it's got two songs on it that like if we're stuck on a desert island i need i need at least one of those it's yeah. a good record yeah. but like there's there's yeah oh yeah yeah it, it's it's always hard to do a desert island list just because like i would have the hardest time doing this show because like i feel like the list would change i i definitely think there's always uh. like there's there's a there's a few like there's a handful that are always going to be there mm -hmm. or it's like artists that's like, well, wait, which record of theirs am I going to put in? You know, um, which is, which is also why, like, I, I will accept discography. Like it, like if you, oh, just, really? put, if you just put Sam oh. on the list, I get it, you know? Cause like, it's, it's like, it, it's like what era or something, you know, like, um, yeah. It gets a little hard with artists like Neil Young or Dylan, where it's just like, well, they changed their whole oeuvre several times throughout their career, you know, like that. But like certain artists where it's just like, like they've, they've always been, like John Prine has always been John Prine, you know? Right. Um, like that, that, that I get. Cause it's so hard to like choose. Um, and I, I've definitely had people uh, drop like uh, it's like Radiohead, and then they put like In Rainbows, Moonshape Pool, and OK Computer. <laughs> like, oh wow! <laughs> they're like I couldn't decide; just pick one. Um, oh. You know, so it's like it's it's really hard. But like I I would do the same. Like, what Coltrane is going to go on the list? Something yeah. like Coltrane. But I like, mean, I. I had to do a coin flip for either Tegan or Sarah or Waxahachie. Mm. And like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it, I'm, I'm, the con is a good record to take. The con. Yeah. Cause I think, mm. I think like, cause Waxahachie is like in the public consciousness right now where it's just yeah. like, it's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was honestly, that was the most fun record to dive back into was the con. Of just like I was like, oh yeah, Tegan and Sarah, and then like you're shuffling through the tracks, and you're just like, man, this was a solid record, 
you know yeah like, it's like it really was um yeah it's just like it's very hard to choose very hard to choose uh hoping i think we will i think we will we might not have time for the entire careful gaze track sorry fellas i you're a local band i don't want to cut you off but like uh it is <laughs> it is democracy now it's it's not my it's not my call but yeah, yeah we're, we're just gonna have to cut off uh one of these tracks here that's okay we'll have time for the full full graveyard club but not careful gaze sorry fellas uh once again not doing it on purpose <laughs> <laughs> not doing it on purpose um yeah i it, i was thinking about um how like how hard it is to answer this question um and i and i'm i don't know like i i, I think I, I think a lot of people take the 10 as like them's the rules when i i i think it should be just like a conversation starter mm. it's like like mark malman gave me a list of 50 ones and i tried my best to get like good grief yeah oh. i'm all in there but like i i think it, it's like because it is it does get to a point where it's just like i think you could get it to 10 but i think it should be okay to like have all the honorable mentions in there mm. i think yeah. they change they change on like what you're listening to what you're in the mood for uh your emotional state like there are some bands that i love that i don't need to listen to when i'm in certain moods absolutely <laughs> oh, yeah yeah absolutely. <laughs> i mean even even christian our bass player was mentioning last night at practice he, he was like i immediately after i sent that list i was regretting my picks and i was like <laughs> well i was like why he was like well no i mean i love all of that stuff but then i would just sit there and think like oh but what about oh but what right. about you know right right it's it's almost like that uh that adage of just like if you're indecisive flip a coin because the mm. second the second it's in the air, you'll know what you really. It's like the second you submit it, you're like, "Oh, why did I do that?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's why I hate doing those email interviews where it's just like, "Oh, it's just five questions. Type out your answers," and then like you overthink it, and you're like, "All right, all right, I think I got it." And then the second you press send, you're like, "Oh my god, please don't post it. Oh, can you take that down? Uh, yeah, no, don't don't post that interview for the love of God." It's like there's something about like the once you let go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that. It's now out of my control, you know. The decision and, and, has been made for yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yep. that's very, very true. But yeah, no, I, I, I definitely understand that. But I, I don't think, I, I, I nothing. I, I, I don't think there's a, such thing as a guilty pleasure. No. no. I, th I think. No, it's just pleasure. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Or, or at least there shouldn't be or especially when it comes to pop music mm -hmm. yeah like, like especially when it comes to pop music i get that like yeah. i mean like like if you have cholesterol problems and you just can't put down the bacon that's a guilty pleasure because you know what's <laughs> going on there i get yeah. that because yeah. life's too short and you're like dude i know this is killing me but like come on like mm. i think that's guilty pleasure but like i don't think i don't think it's like pop music, movies, books. Well, well, it was just I, such a thing. It felt like just such a, a guilty pleasure thing just felt like such a teenage, like high school into your 20s thing yes. that people would, they would try to sort of put themselves above you because you're just like, oh, I love that whatever Whitney right. Houston record from cover to cover because right. it's nostalgia or whatever and you'd be like oh my gosh you like that like oh like but yeah, i don't was... have that in my 40s i don't i don't no. give a damn anymore you know no no and, and, and to the people making fun of whitney houston one you're missing out <laughs> oh absolutely 100 percent. yeah yeah like 100 yeah it's just like whitney houston was like the bo jackson of vocals like yeah. it's just, like, it's just <laughs> insane power insane talent yeah. um but like yeah there, there's a weird 
thing about that of just like the the cultural conditioning of like um have you ever read that uh book supernatural strategies for starting a rock and roll group no <laughs> no uh, but what a title wow uh, you gotta you gotta you gotta read it it's like it's a total sat satirical thing like they they have a seance later in the book and they talk to paul mccartney <laughs> And they're like, and they're like, I know what you're thinking. Paul's still alive. And then they go back to the whole Paul is dead thing. He's like, no, oh, he's not. We're yeah. <laughs> so it's like Amazing. it's a farce, but like it, it, it does, it does talk about that of yeah. just like, you know, like they're 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 really, there really is no right and wrong with music, but you need to form a powerful clique and a club. And the clubs must go to war for your honor. You yes. know, like, this, like yeah. this whole thing, yeah. you know, uh, and it's just like the, like, start this sharks and jets thing. Cause yeah. like that gets more attention to the, um, it's, it's funny because like they're, it, they're totally joking the entire book, but some of the things actually kind of make sense. Like mm. some of the tips actually kind of, it's, it, it's similar to like Frank Zappa going like, I'll tell you music industry ran better when it was ran by the suits, you know, yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, but he had a good point. Cause like, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go from bikini kill to newfound glory to Garth Brooks. I'm just, and I'm not guilty about it. <laughs> yeah. Especially for any of those artists. Yeah. <laughs> what I, what I love is how many, how many people in punk fans are coming out of the closet as Garth Brooks fans. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, that dude really does have friends in low places. Mm -hmm. It's like this guy, this guy, because like one, the guy has three thousand hits. You got to give. Yeah, credit. yeah. I suggest looking up his stats, and they yeah. are surprising. People don't understand how big. Yeah, Garth, Garth Brooks is insanely huge. He's insanely huge. But the thing is, like. I remember having this conversation with someone because I used to be this. I was like, man, what is, I don't get the deal with Garth Brooks. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, I didn't know he wrote that. I didn't know he wrote that. And then, and then you like listen to Thunder Road and you're like, well, this is a solid album, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he's, 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 he's got the chops. Like the, he does. the, the band delivers. You, mm -hmm. you got to get yeah. But like, yeah, so many people I know in like hardcore bands, punk bands, garage rock, like they're like the two artists that have come up the most in the Venn diagram, the Cranberries and oh. Garth Brooks. Yeah. 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 A, lot of, a lot of punks and metalheads are digging the Cranberries and Garth Brooks. And it's just like, but I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Cranberries are another underrated band. That is, I, that I, is, oh, that is funny because I grew up in Texas listening to Garth Brooks and one of my transitions into rock and roll was no need to argue <laughs> the cranberries so that yeah yep that's hilarious yeah i did, i don't know what it, it's just like maybe it was just like the time of like when certain people were raised just like what they had access to but like yeah certain things are standing the test of time mm -hmm. and like i think a lot of people are starting to remember where it's just like it's like, I don't know, man. Like, it's like, especially since Garth Brooks' social media is kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> like, I think people are only like looking at this, like this guy, but it's just like, no, nah, like there's so many songs. It's like, it's almost like the nitty gritty dirt band of just mm -hmm. like, it's like, wait, Garth Brooks wrote that song? It's like, yeah, man. Garth yeah. Brooks wrote that song and that song and that song. And it's mm -hmm. just like, and then people are like, yeah, it's like kind of like how people get into Steely Dan later in life, where you're like, ah, oh, shit, do I like Steely Dan? I've been making yeah. fun of Steely Dan for years. I actually, you know, it's like, right. I think some people did that with Garth. They're like, man, I've been making fun of this guy, but this, I think I kind of like this guy. <laughs> completely. Yeah, completely. Um, well, listen, I now that Democracy Now! is on, I, I, uh, I, I got to end this thing here. Um, but it was great talking with you. Uh, you too. I, I won't be at the show because I I can't be in two places at once. But right. I hope it I hope it's a rager. I hope it goes well. And uh, seriously, new stuff sounds great. I'm glad we could actually play it. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it does sound great. And uh, congrats! Uh, 
you got the you, you, soon you'll have the seven inch in hand and it, it'll all be well <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. well yeah we really it was a, a lot of fun talking to you doc yeah, yeah thanks for having us thanks for having us again press the button and uh see you guys see you guys later <laughs> all right thanks bye